your lifetime. You'll never understand the damage Al Hussein is doing and why he's doing it. Whether it's a military that's now broken, whether it's the leadership of the military that's been decapitated, or weapon systems that are almost antiquated, the man has almost reduced us to a second-class nation in terms of a military. You don't know any of this because you haven't been told about this from the potheads and the, uh, and the crack addicts in the media. The crackheads who don't look like the crackheads in the media, believe me, they are the ones who are responsible for what's happening. Because the crackheads in the media are supposed to be the estate, the fourth estate, that keeps the government in check. But aside from Michael Savage and a very few others in the media, there is no fourth estate. It's the fifth column. The fifth column marching alongside the liberal fascists who are stamp stamping on our grapes of... Uh, of uh, stamping on us, not stamping out the grapes of wrath, by the way, but literally growing the poison seeds, poison seeds. Now I look in Canada. I wake up this morning and I see in the Drudge Report that some, some schmuck with uh, tattoos with a fist has just been elected in Canada. He's the son of a moron named Trudeau. Trudeau is a playboy, an all-around useless idiot who destroyed Canada with his liberalism and stupidity. Another golden boy. Ruined Canada. Now all of a sudden the son is, is now elected. Why was he elected? Because he's got a good body and he's got tattoos. So now what does he want to do? The first thing this idiot in Canada says he wants to do is save the environment. He wants to talk about carbon. Another genius. Another moron doesn't even know what carbon is. He has the, the scientific literacy of Al Sharpton. Well, how can you say that? He's got... A, he's got a 10-pack on his stomach, and he's got a tattoo on his left shoulder, and he's a boxer. He must be smarter than everybody else. Well, if you're a fan of the American media, I guess you can grade someone's intelligence by the tightness of their stomach and the number of uh, tattoos that, uh, uh, that are on their skin. So the fact of the matter is, this is what the idiot's talking about, carbon and bringing in more refugees. I swear to you, he wants to bring in more Syrian refugees into Canada. Can you believe this? You better believe it. The world is breaking up right in front of your eyes. The main question facing us is this question. Is diversity destroying democracy? Or, as the liberals would argue, diversity, in fact, is making democracy stronger. Now, until this time, I would say that diversity has made America great. The melting pot. Isn't that what we heard ever since we've been a child? The melting pot, the melting pot, the melting pot. And then all of a sudden, what happened was the melting pot became the chamber pot. We were no longer bringing in immigrants who wanted to lead a decent life and contribute to the country. We're bringing in immigrants who did the opposite. They contributed nothing uh, except crime and disease, and they sucked the system dry. I'm not naming a particular group. You can put two and two together. You can attach a name tag to that particular uh, statement if you wish. So now we're at the verge of destroying the melting pot in a way it can never, ever be healed by bringing in 100,000 Syrian refugees. Now, you could argue that at least with the Hondurans and Guatemalans and El Salvadorans and Mexicans, we see with our own eyes how hard they work. The predominant number of them are family members and, 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 and Catholics, by the way. Just take that for what it is. Last night on my bicycle ride, I saw at 7 o'clock at night. It was dark out here. I saw a group of Mexicans still working on a construction site. It had turned dark. They had no lights. They had to finish the pour of the concrete on steps. Six to eight of them were there working. You weren't working. They were. I'm not blind, and I'm not deaf, and I'm not dumb. I see what's going on. So in that sense, you can argue that diversity is good for democracy up to a certain point now. But now we have another story. Now we have quite another story. 100,000 Syrians... Who are these Syrians? Will they ever assimilate? Do they want to give to America or do they want to take from America? Are any of them terrorists? Not allowed to ask, ask the question. We know terrorism seems to be embodied in a particular uh, member of a certain religion right now in the u universe. I know it's the opposite of what you've been brainwashed to believe, but your mind knows the truth. And so we have this, this question to answer. So we have this Turban Durban the senator from Michigan, who called American troops Nazis and worse, now saying in clip three the following. Let's hear clip, clip three. The United States leads the world in financial assistance for the Syrian refugee effort.
But we have a moral obligation to do that and more. More? I call on the administration to accept 100,000 Syrian refugees. Wow. Allow me to put the 100,000 number in perspective. All right, let's stop right there. Now he starts to double talk. Now he starts to double talk. So, do you agree with Durbin we should take in 100,000 Syrian refugees? I mean, after all, if you're a good liberal, you should, you should adopt one. See, I think that if you want to take in 100,000 Syrian refugees, every liberal family who wants to do that should be required to bring a Syrian refugee or family into their apartment. There's plenty of extra, extra bedrooms in America. Many of these families have no children or the children grow up. You can put one in your, your daughter's old bedroom. Put one in your son's old bedroom. I'm sure they'll treat you well. Now, be sure to get them a prayer rug. And be sure that your meals are halal or they'll throw you out of your own apartment. So let's look now at some of the historical facts that you did not learn at college, the things they left out. Who was the Grand Mufti of Jerusalem? Al Husseini. Well, for one, he was a very wealthy man. See, not all Palestinians were poor. He was one of the most powerful and richest men amongst the rivaling clans in the Ottoman province known as the Judean part of Palestine. But this one joined the Muslim Brotherhood in 1928, the year it was uh, created, and he transplanted the Nazi genocide in Europe into the post-war Middle East. He transplanted the Nazi genocide in Europe into the post-war Middle East. This is before Israel was created, and this is for you brainwashed youth. You brainwashed youth who think that the Muslims would be fine if there was no Israel, if only Israel would give up the West Bank and the Judea and Samaria. So before Israel was even created, he wanted a Nazi genocide amongst Jews. And in 1929, this wonderful Palestinian went along with the statement, he who kills a Jew is assured a place in the next world. And as a result of that, Arabs went on a rampage throughout Palestine. They killed 133 Jews and wounded 339. In 1933, Al Husseini had his first meeting with Nazi General Consul Heinrich Wolf in Jerusalem. In 1936, Husseini's incitement led to more rioting in Jaffa. It led to a three year intifada. <laughs> Sorry, in 1937, he met, met with Adolf Eichmann and Herbert Hagen, one of Eichmann's colleagues in the Gestapo's Department of Jewish Affairs. Eichmann wrote that the Nazi flags fly in Palestine and they adorn their houses with swastikas and portraits of Hitler. Hitler. This is before it, Israel was created. During World War II, the Mufti lived in Berlin. Berlin, where he traveled in top Nazi circles. He even stayed in Hitler's bunker toward the end of the war. In 1941, Husseini issued a fatwa calling for the Germans to bomb Tel Aviv. At a meeting in Berlin in November of 41, Hitler assured Al Husseini that his goal was the destruction of Jews, all Jews living in Arabia, all Jews. Hitler provided the Mufti with a monthly budget to foment jihad in Palestine. Hitler gave the Mufti a radio station where he preached genocide in Arabic. And he said this, according to the Muslim religion, the defense of your life is a duty which can only be fulfilled by annihilating the Jews. This is your best opportunity to get rid of this dirty race which has usurped your rights and brought misfortune and destruction on your countries. Kill the Jews, burn their property, destroy their stores. Your sole hope of salvation lies in annihilating the Jews before they annihilated you, close quote. That's before Israel was founded, all you fools who think that all the Palestinians want is the land that was stolen from them. This is a lesson you didn't learn at Harvard. Near the end of the war, Al Husseini went on his radio show and preached this, and he was the most powerful Arab at the time. He was no under, don't underestimate him. He said this, he said the Versailles Treaty was a disaster for the Germans as well as the Arabs. But the Germans know how to get rid of the Jews. The Germans have never harmed any Muslim. And they are again fighting our common enemy who persecuted Arabs and Muslims. But most of all, they have def definitely solved the Jewish problem. Arabs, he said, rise as one to protect your sacred rights. Kill the Jews wherever you find them. Allah is with you. For two years, beginning at the age of 16, around 1945, Yasser Arafat worked for the Mufti, helping to buy and smuggle weapons in the war against Jews. Many reports say that Yasser Arafat was Husseini's nephew or cousin. This was on the American History Channel uh, last night, and this can all be researched. 
You'll find it 100% accurate. So what does that have to do with the Syrians that um, Hussein Obama wants to bring into America? What does it have to do with Turban Durban wanting to bring 100,000 Syrian refugees into America? Anything or nothing? Huh? I'll let you read the Bible to find out how this ends. I, I, re I researched it last night. And I don't, it doesn't end very well. Woe unto them that call evil good and good evil. That change darkness into light and light into darkness. That change bitter into sweet and sweet into bitter. Woe unto them that are wise in their own eyes and prudent in their own right. Woe unto them that are mighty to drink wine and men of strength to mingle strong drink. They that justify the wicked for, for a reward and take away the righteousness of the righteous from him. Therefore, as the tongue of fire devoureth the stubble, and as the chaff is consumed in the flame, so their root shall be as rottenness, and their blossom shall go up as dust, because they have rejected the law of the Lord of hosts and condemned the word of the Holy One of Israel. I don't have to read any more. You think it's all fire and brimstone, and you think there is no God. Many of you believed in the Ten Commandments of liberalism. You don't believe in the realities of your own world. You've lost contact with your own world. And so, again, I have to refer to another book, which is my book, Government Zero, because I want to read you one paragraph. In the chapter called Zero Im Immigration, there's a, an extremely important question on page 158, which for those of you who are not going to get the book, I'll read right now. It's clear, it's page 158, I don't mince words, there's no time left. This is zero hour for government zero. Do you understand? Remember the, the concerned scientists used to have the clock, like one minute to midnight? Well, it's midnight in America. It's New Year's Eve. If you'd like a thousand years of darkness, pay no attention to what I'm about to read to you. Zero immigration in government zero, page 158. What country is this, I ask? Obama has flooded America with Africans, Middle Easterners, and Chinese over the past three years. Europeans need not apply for citizenship. You can now see what he meant when he promised to transform America. While Mexicans remain the largest immigrant population in the United States, the progressive Islamist administration has managed to increase immigration from the Middle East, Asia, and the Caribbean the most. Overall, the number of immigrants living in the United States legally and illegally is at an all-time high of 41.3 million people. It wasn't too long ago that America was still a first world nation that led the world in commerce and military might. Despite decades of progressive assault, private property, free enterprise, Judeo-Christian values, and respect for law and order still dominated American culture. English was the first and only language, and immigrants enthusiastically learned to read, write, and speak it in an attempt to become Americans. Upon these pillars was built the freest, richest, most powerful nation in human history. Page 159. Today, the entire foundation of American society is under assault by a progressive Islamist alliance that hasn't neglected reshaping our entire immigration policy. We're no longer a land of opportunity for ambitious, talented immigrants looking to escape social democracies with large welfare states. We're now a land of government handouts for waves of immigrants, both legal and illegal, who come here for the generous welfare benefits our progressive government keeps increasing. We're also a target for Islamo-fascists who are actively infiltrating our free and open society for the express purpose of destroying American civilization. Turkey's former prime minister and now president, Erdogan, once said, quote, we will ride the train of democracy to our ultimate goal, meaning a new caliphate based upon Sharia law. He was talking about Turkey. The Islamo-fascists want to ride our American democratic train to the same goal here. What they don't blow up, they could eventually rule by voting. And then I give you the facts and the numbers. And then I talk about sleeper cells amongst us, leaving Christians to the wolves, all in zero immigration. The sleepers awaken, all documented here, who they were by the name, importing crime with the crime statistics that they won't teach you at Harvard or publish in the San Francisco Chronicle. All in zero immigration, importing disease. It's all factual. I don't invent one word, I don't create one bacterium, it's all real. And then in zero immigration, importing social...